Satanic oppression is real everywhere, in every nation of the earth. But more real is the victory won on the cross through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this you have access to the abundant life that brings deliverance from all satanic oppression, dominion, prosperity, and breakthrough. This is your moment of breakthrough, brought to you by Pastor Isaac and Dominion Life Christian Center, Oakland, California. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to today's program, The Moment of Breakthrough. I know that God is going to bless you mightily today in the precious name of Jesus. Today we are going to be looking into the word of the Lord. And the title of today's message is Overcoming the Spirit of Fear. Overcoming the Spirit of Fear. And I want us to open the word of God with me. And uh, I'm going to be looking from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And I begin to read from verse 3. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. He says, put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, and some scriptures put it, against the schemes of the devil. Against the schemes of the devil. One of the things that I need to let you know that the devil is a defeated enemy. The devil is an enemy that has been defeated. All the devil has today and he uses against God's people are his lies. But unknowingly to many believers, you still fall for it. You still fought for his lies. But because it is wiles, his schemes, his tricks, Satan is a trickster. He himself knows that he has but a short time. Now, the plan of the devil against your life is not the final decision of what will happen to you. I, I, what I mean is that the enemy's plan against for your life is not God's plan for your life because Satan does not have a final answer. He doesn't have a, have a final say in your life. But he tell lies. The Bible calls him the father of lie. And this is what I mean. Sickness is a lie of the devil. Because when Jesus died and shed his blood, uh, the Bible says, by his stripes we were healed. So you were healed. So he paid the price for your divine health. He paid the price for your divine healing already. So what we see is the lie of the devil. And that's why the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the knowledge of the truth of the finished work of Calvary is enough to set you free. So I want you to look at every situation in your life that is not of God. It is a lie of the enemy. They don't have to be. If you know the truth, the throat that you know will make you free. The truth is this. Satan is a defeated enemy. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Thank you, Jesus. And I need to say this. If you need prayer agreement right now, you need us to agree with you in prayer. Just call the number on the screens. Intercessors are waiting on the other line, other hand of the lines. You call, multiple lines are open. They're going to pray with you. They're going to agree with you. And things will begin to change in your life. And I speak to your fears this moment. 
I speak to every situation in your life that is not of God. Everything that you dread, the fear of living, the fear of dying, the fear of being broke, the, 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 the fear of loneliness, the fear of brokenness, every area of life that the enemy is slapping you in the face with fear. I come against such in your life in the name of Jesus. And the knowledge of the truth will overturn the situation in Jesus' name. Don't forget, pick your phone and call the number on the screen. We will agree with you in prayer right now. And you'll begin to see results and changes in your life in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says here in verse 7. The Bible says... And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. So, the Bible says, he deceives the whole world. So, Satan is a perverter, he's a deceiver, he's a liar. Now, the Bible says, a place was no longer found for him in heaven, so he was cast down. Then, verse 10, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Now, I'm reading from Revelation chapter 12. I started from verse 7. Now, I'm reading verse 12. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you will dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitant of the earth, for the sea and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great thought, because he knows that he has a short time. The Bible says, Satan has but a short time, and he knows. He says, Woe to the inhabitant of the earth. Now, let me explain this. When you are a born again believer, even though you live in this physical house, the house, right? But you live in God's kingdom on house. So when the Bible says, Woe to the inhabitant of the house, it's talking about the horn believers. So that's why you need to give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, even though you live in this house, but you live in God's kingdom on earth. The Bible says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has a short time. He says, Rejoice, O heavens. So when you are a born again believer, you belong to the company of people that the Bible says should rejoice. So, by revelation of light, by the revelation of God's word, born again believers live here on earth, but they live in God's kingdom. You are untouchable for the kingdom, by the kingdom of hell, when you know your right, people of God. Let me say, and you shall know the truth, and the truth, the knowledge of the truth will make you free. Now, let me say this to you. Whatever is not good in your life is not God. If it is not good, it's not God, it cannot be God. So, defeat is not God's plan for your life. Sickness is not God's plan for your life. Failure, brokenness is not God's plan for your life. That is why you need to know it is not God's design for you to live a defeated life. God's plan for you is to live a fulfilled and impactful life, a life of glory. That, a, that, that is God's plan because that is why, what Jesus came to, to do. He came. In, in, Genesis, in, in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 10, let me say, the thief coming not to kill, to steal, 
and to destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So God's plan is for you to have, to live the abundant life. That is God's plan for your life. So anything other than an abundant life is not God's plan for your life. So you need to know that is the lie of the devil. And the Bible says, for it deceives the whole world. So the devil is a deceiver. You have to reject it. But I know you think, but Pastor, this is real. It is true. I, I feel sickness in my body. But people of God, the sickness is there because you have failed to neutralize the effect with the knowledge of the throat. If you feel sickness in your body, it is true. You feel it. But the truth is that you cannot be sick because it took your sickness is with him on the cross. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, by his stripes you were healed. So you were healed before you were even born, before the sickness came. So, but we need to know, we need to know that the devil uses fear as a weapon. He sow the seeds of fear into your mind. Uh, you know, do you imagine that somebody has a headache? The devil is going to link it with death. Somebody has pain in the legs. The devil is going to show you how it can lead to death. Why? To, to attack your mind. To attack your faith. To steal your confidence away. And, and plant the spirit of fear within you. So, but you can only neutralize the spirit of, of fear by the word of God. The Bible says, for the devil has come down to you having great throat because he knows that he has a short time. So the devil himself knows that he has a short time. So you and I need to know that time is running out on Satan. He's not going to have the last love over you. Is not going to win. Is not going to have a say over your life because it's God's plan that will come to pass. That is why you need to stand. You need to be encouraged in the Lord. The battles of your life are battles that you are going to win. The challenges of your life are challenges that you are going to overcome. Now, the Bible, says, the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the law deliver him from them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God deliver the righteous from them all. You may be going through so much battles right now, but you are going to overcome in Jesus' name. That is, even if you fall seven times, seven times, you're going to rise. Let's see what the Bible says. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, the Bible says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love and of a sound mind. Anything that torments your spirit, anything that brings fear to you is not from the Lord. Anything that, that, that puts fear, that steals your confidence from you is not from the Lord. Is the lie of the enemy. And then he says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. We need to control what we process in our mind. L let me show you one scriptures. The Bible says here, it says, be vigilant. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, be vigilant. First Peter 5, 8. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Satan walks like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's not a lion. The Bible calls him like a roaring lion. <laughs> I know the devil has told you several times that you are not going to make it. But you will make it in Jesus' name. Now, do you think, do, do you think the devil would notify you, will have to give you notice to kill you or to end your life? No, 
it's not hindered your life because it cannot. Nothing has happened to you because it's within, it's out, it, no, it's not within, it is outside of his control. It is outside of his authority. Let me say, for the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. So the devils put fear in you so that it can steal your faith. He knows that once, if you have faith, you can overcome. He knows that when you have faith, you can win all the battles of your life. So it, it brings fear to attack your faith. That's why the Bible wants you hand high. In First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, Be vigilant. Because your adversary works about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The devil is looking for those that are vulnerable, those that are out of touch with revelations, those that don't know what the word of God is saying. That is why as a Christian, as a born again believer, you are supposed to be a friend to your Bible. You need to study God's word on a daily basis. Why? Because soldiers don't train at war front. Your study yesterday becomes your defense tomorrow. The revelation in your spirit yesterday becomes what is going to speak for you when the devil comes knocking. That is, says, be vigilant. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil is your enemy, whether you like it or not. The devil doesn't like God's destiny for your life. So you don't have to offend him. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to offend nobody. The devil does not like it already. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of, uh, uh, in, in, in the book of Revelation chapter 12. Because when it was cast down from heaven, it, it went mad. It's going crazy. It's attacking anyone that has anything to do with the Lord. You know you already have in his kitty the unbelievers because the Bible says so when the wicked prosper it's for their everlasting destruction. So uh, but those that have made their decisions for the Lord he wants to make sure that he, he keeps them uh, in his camp. But he's not going to keep you. He's not going to get you in the name of Jesus. But I am trying to tell you that you can overcome all your fears by the revelation that is in God's word. That's why you need to study the word of God every day. Because in God's word is victory, is life. In God's word is everything opposite of what the enemy is trying to bring to you. You are not going to die in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I don't know how many times the enemy has flashed death in your face. I don't know how many times he has made things look bleak. I don't know how many times he's painted a picture of an end to your life. You are not going to die in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus died, he shed his blood, he traded his place for your place. So you need to deal with that demon of fear. You need to deal with the spirit of fear. And I agree with you right now that in the name of Jesus, in every area of attack against your mind, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Your future is great. Your future is colorful. You have a bright future. Things may not be going the way you want right now. All you are going through is a passage of life. Where you are going, where God designed for you, is there for you. You are going to get there in the name of Jesus. Situations that don't look good are passages of life. People of God, they don't stop God's plan from coming to your to pass in your life. You want to draw a cue. You, you, you want to learn from the story of, of Joseph. Joseph had it rough. Joseph had it rough. I don't know if what you are going through is any compared to what Joseph went through. Joseph was rejected by his home brothers. So if you are watching me on this program and you are going through rejection right now, 
you have been disappointed. Somebody you have placed all your trust on has run away with all the trust, left you stranded in the name of Jesus. I decree healing on your mind. I need you to know that Jesus cannot leave you alone. Jesus can't leave you stranded. He's always there for you. So rejection is not something new. Rejection does not stop the plan of God from coming to pass. I know you feel disappointed, but people of God, you need to rise and say to yourself, God's plan for me is still entered. Joseph went through rejection. People of God, he was rejected by his brother, not just hated by his brother, he was sold into slavery. He was sold into slavery by his own brother. It's one, it's one thing to be a slave, is another thing to be sold by your brothers. The people of God, none of those stop the plan of God from coming to pass in his, in his life. None of your experiences, none of your negative experiences in the past and to this point will be able to stop the plan of God concerning your life. In the name of Jesus, Joseph made it to God's plan for his life. He made it to the throne in Egypt. You are going to make it to your throne. In the name of Jesus, you have to reject the spirit of fear. Now, let me say something here right now. If you have never given your life to Christ, you are not a born again believer, you have no claim, you have no case. So you need to do that right now. You need to give your life to the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 14 and verse 1, only a fool says in their heart, there is no God. So you need to embrace God. You need to uh, accept him as the Lord and Savior, or Savior of your life so that you can begin to have access to divine provisions of God, divine protection, divine... You, you activate your relationship with him. So I'm going to give an opportunity that you're going to give your life to Christ. If you have never given your life to, to Christ, you need to do so right now. But before I pray, I need to tell you, it, it doesn't take a whole lot. You confess him as the Lord and Savior of your life, number one. Then you begin to learn his ways by the study of the word, by, by, by finding a Bible believing church like Dominion Life Christian Center and uh, where you where you grow where you are nurtured until you grow thank you Jesus thank you Jesus it, 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 it's uh, somebody said well isn't it too late it's not too late that's why you are on this program today it's not by your making it is God's design for you to join me on this program today. So, I, I, I need to pray with you. If you want to give your life to Christ right now, you want to start a relationship with him, just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you as the Son of God. I acknowledge and I affirm that you died for me and you rose for me. I acknowledge the shedding of your blood. I identify with your death and your resurrection. You shed your blood for me. You die for me to write my name in the book of life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Come into my life today. Come in now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, people of God, thank you, Jesus. I have a word from the Lord for somebody right now. Everything may have gone upside down in your life. There is more to you in the name of Jesus. More will still come out of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thus saith the Lord. There is greatness awaiting you in Jesus' name. What you have been through is a passage of life 
so that you can have a story. <laughs> Everything Joseph went through became a story. Yes, it was a story. Yes, what you are going through is your story. After every story is a testimony. Your testimony is going to show, off, show forth very soon in the name of Jesus. I see greatness in your future. I see God's glory in your life. In the name of Jesus. Please, I need you to pick the call right, phone right now and, and call the number of the screen. Let's agree with you in prayer and put a seal on this thing. And, 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 and I see a new beginning starting in your life from today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise. This, the, the, today is your moment of, of breakthrough. This, this, this one is for you. I, I believe I am here today on this program just because of you. Congratulations. This is your moment of breakthrough. Thank you for joining me today. Here in Oakland, California, and we are growing into a neighborhood close to you. We are growing into San Jose and the San Francisco airport area. So you're going to see the address on the screen. You're going to see the phone numbers on the screen. Call and find out and check us out and see what the Lord is doing. I know God is about to start something great in your life. Thank you for joining. Your moment of breakthrough is here. Please send me your testimonies because they're going to come. Send me your praise report because things will change in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. It's been my pleasure to be with you on the moment of breakthrough. I know God has great plans concerning your life and I know that the purpose of God in your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' mighty name. I'd like to get you acquainted with our programs and with our church. Now, we are located on 3814 Macafa Boulevard in Oakland, Oakland, California. Our zip code is 94619. Our Sunday service, Dominion Celebration Service, is at 11 a.m. every Sunday. And on Thursday, 7 p.m. is our midweek service, Dominion from Coast to coast. I invite you to come and join us and be part of the great things that the Lord started to do in Oakland. Your life will never remain the same. Also, we are growing into neighborhoods closer to you. We are growing into San Jose. We have a fellowship in San Jose right now. The address will be on the screen. So every Friday, I minister in San Jose. It will be good to see you there. It is it's your season of breakthrough. Come and receive your breakthrough. Come and receive the touch of God's power. It is not over until you have won. The challenges of your life, you are meant to overcome. And you will overcome them in the precious name of Jesus. You cannot be defeated. Life can end without you winning. It is God's plan and design for you to win. And you are going to win in Jesus' mighty name. There is power in God's word. God's word has the ability to bring deliverance. Yes, come. It will be good to see you in some of these meetings and saw some of our meetings. Thank you for being there this one year. Now, we did this hour. This is the first anniversary of Moment of Breakthrough and we give God all the glory. This month, Moment of Breakthrough is one year. Thank you for being there. Thank you. You are blessed. Oh,